Hey guys, my name is Ronald Solinto. I'm a registered nurse and also a family nurse practitioner. Welcome to my channel, Nurse Track 101, where nursing concepts are made easy just for you. Well, let's get started. Come on, guys. Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Nurse Track 101, and this is your host. Ronald Salimto. Uh, today we're gonna do some practice questions on NCLEX, especially on uh, diabetes mellitus. We're gonna do several questions and we're gonna try to attack this question one at a time. And by the way, I'm still at the Grand Teton National Forest and the view over my back is just amazing. So without further ado, let's get started. As you can see, I mean, there's going to be some cars driving by trying to get some camping spot, but that's okay. I mean, my voice is louder than them, so. Okay, the first question. A client is brought to the emergency department in an unresponsive state, and a diagnosis of hyperosmolar hyperglycemic syndrome is made. The nurse would immediately prepare to initiate which anticipated healthcare provider's prescription? One, endotracheal intubation. Uh, two, 100 units of NPH insulin, three, intravenous infu infusion of normal saline, and four, IV infusion of sodium bicarbonate. Uh, if you read number one, endotracheal intubation, it's true that the client is unresponsive, but, okay, let's go back. The question asks for their nurse would immediately prepare to initiate which anticipated healthcare provider's prescription. So this is, what is the first thing that um, the first thing, the first treatment for this uh, type of uh, condition. So that's what you want to know. So the first one, the first option is endotracheal intubation. Well, don't read into the question because it doesn't say that the, pa the patient is not breathing. It just says that the patient is unresponsive. So don't read into the question. Uh, you don't need endotracheal intubation unless the patient stops breathing. So we're going to so this one, we're gonna um, cross it out. The second one is 100 units of NPH insulin. Uh, you don't need NPH insulin as in this case because NPH insulin is not a short acting or it's not, it's not a regular acting insulin. So this one is an intermediate acting insulin. NPH insulin is not appropriate in this situation. So you wanna cross it out okay number three intravenous infusion of normal saline as you know with hyper or smaller hyperglycemic syndrome um, fluid resuscitation is uh, one of the most important things to do so I'm gonna choose that one or I'm gonna keep that one first number four let's go to number four number four IV infusion of sodium bicarbonate um, you don't want to use sodium bicarbonate in this case because it can uh, precipitate a further drop in potassium. So this one, I'm going to cross it out and I'm going to choose this one. So IV infusion of normal saline is the correct answer. Okay, the second question, a client with a diagnosis of diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA is being treated in the emergency department. Which findings support this diagnosis? Select all that apply. So this is a multiple multiple answer questions, and what the question is asking is that which findings or what laboratory results or what symptoms that the patient has uh, that are characteristics of DKA. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's go through one at a time. Uh, number one, increase in pH. As you guys know, diabetic ketoacidosis, acidotic, uh, acidosis or acidotic, the patient will have a decrease in pH. And so number one is not correct. So we're gonna cross that out, okay. Number two, comatose state. Um, usually the patient with diabetic ketoacidosis or HHNS, hyperosmolar hyperglycemic syndrome, they will have they, they will be comatose or unconscious when they go to the hospital. So we're gonna pick that one. Uh, deep, rapid, 
breathing. Uh, this is one characteristic of uh, diabetic ketoacidosis because uh, this is called Kussmaul's breathing because the patient will have labor, deep, rapid breathing. So um, we're gonna pick this one. Uh, decrease urine output. Number four, decrease urine output. As you know, somebody with diabetic ketoacidosis, they will have severe, severe hyperglycemia. And somebody with severe hyperglycemia will have polyuria, which means that the patient will urinate more. So decrease urine output, that's not right. So we're gonna cross this out. Number five, elevated blood glucose level. Uh, this makes sense because diabetic ketoacidosis will have severe, severe hyperglycemia. You're going to have elevated blood glucose level. So we're going to pick that one. So the right answers are 2, 3, and 5. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, the next question is uh, the nurse teaches a client with diabetes mellitus about differentiating between hypoglycemia and ketoacidosis. As you know, ketoacidosis is hyperglycemia. Uh, the client demonstrates an understanding of the teaching by stating that a form of glucose should be taken if which symptom or symptoms develop. Select all that apply. Oh, so this is again a multiple answer question. You have to select all that apply, all the answers that apply to the question. And the question asks for the client demonstrates an understanding of the teaching by stating that a form of glucose should be taken if which symptom or symptoms develop. So a form of glucose, if a client takes a form of glucose, some glucose, that means the client will have hypoglycemia. So this question asks about the sign and symptoms of hypoglycemia. And we're going to go through one question or one answer at a time. So the first one is polyuria. As you guys know, polyuria is not a sign of hypoglycemia. It's a sign of hyperglycemia. So we're going to cross this out. Shakiness. Yes, shakiness is a sign of hypoglycemia or, or low blood sugar. So we're going to pick this one. Number three, palpitations. Yes, this also is one of the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia. So we're going to pick this one. Blurred vision. Blurred vision is more of a symptom of hyperglycemia. So we're going to cross this out. Lightheadedness or feeling dizziness is also a symptom of hypoglycemia. So we're going to pick this one. And fruity breath odor. Um, this one is more like um, somebody with ketoacidosis or hyperglycemia. So we're going to cross this one out. So the correct answers will be 2, 3, and 5. Okay, let's go to the next question. Okay, the next question is, a client with diabetes mellitus demonstrates acute anxiety when admitted to the hospital for the treatment of hyperglycemia. What is the appropriate intervention to decrease the client's anxiety? Um, this patient or client, he is in uh, for treatment of hyperglycemia and verbalizes to you that he or she has acute anxiety. He or she is anxious about, about being in the hospital. Um, so what is the appropriate intervention? So for this question, you wanna use a therapeutic communication skill. One of the most important things to do is to address uh, the client's feeling. That's, that's the key to answer this question. Um, that's the key to in therapeutic communication skill. So let's go, let's go through one answer at a time. Number one, administer a sedative. Well, this does not really appropriate, it's not appropriate intervention, and it really does not address the client's feelings. So we're gonna cross this out. Number two, convey empathy, trust, and respect toward the client. Well, this seems like a good response, but we're gonna keep this answer right now. Okay, number three, ignore the sign the signs and symptoms of anxiety anticipating that they will soon disappear oh this is not a correct response you don't ignore uh, the patient's feelings you have to acknowledge it and address it so this is not a the right answer for this one number four make sure that the client is familiar with the correct medical terms to promote understanding of what is happening well it is important to for the client to understand 
everything that is happening but the client will not understand anything at all if the anxiety is not addressed so this one is not a correct response number two will be the right answer okay let's get to the next question okay number five uh, the nurse is preparing a plan of care for a client with diabetes mellitus who has hyperglycemia the nurse places priority on which client problem as you guys see the question here this is about plan of care and notice the keyword which is priority so what is the priority with somebody who has hyperglycemia priority plan of care for somebody who has hyperglycemia as you guys know in patient with hyperglycemia they can develop uh, diabetic ketoacidosis or hyper or smaller hyperglycemic syndrome which is a very urgent problems so what you want to focus on or what you want to use is the Maslow's hierarchy of needs the first thing to do is to address the physiological needs of the client okay let's go through each answer here lack of knowledge I mean to be able to understand what the client's condition here is is very important the understanding has to um, will come later because we have to address the physiological need first so lack of knowledge I'm gonna cross this out inadequate fluid volume yeah inadequate fluid volume this is related to physiological need as you guys know um, patient with diabetes will have will have DKA and HHNS and as a result they will have osmotic diuresis which is uh, a loss of fluid we will become hypovolemia so you want to address this one so I'm gonna keep this one because this is a physiological need number three compromise family coping uh, this is important but not now I mean this is not a physiological need they will come later so I'm gonna cross this out as well the next answer will be inadequate consumption of nutrients uh, this is important but this is not the most priority the most priority will be inadequate fluid volume you want to talk about this number four you want to talk about with patient later but not now the most important will be inadequate fluid volume this is the priority in patient with hyperglycemia so you want to pick number two okay um, the next question is the home health nurse visit a, visits a client with a diagnosis of type 1 diabetes mellitus the client relates a history of vomiting and diarrhea and tells the nurse that no food has been consumed for the last 24 hours which additional statement by the client indicates a need for further teaching so this is about education to the um, education for the client this client complains of vomiting and diarrhea and he said that he hasn't consumed any food for the last 24 hours which of the client statements needs further teaching so if you see this keyword right here need for further teaching that means you want to pick the incorrect statement by the client so remember need for further teaching means you want to pick the incorrect statements or statement by the client let's go through one um, let's go through each answer number one I need to stop my insulin as you guys know if somebody with type 1 diabetes mellitus you really can't stop your insulin doesn't matter if you eat or not you can't you cannot stop your insulin so this is a wrong statement I'm gonna keep this one just I'm gonna go through each answer I'm gonna keep this one right here number two I need to increase my fluid intake uh, this is a correct statement for somebody who has diabetes mellitus I'm gonna cross this out okay number three I need to monitor my blood glucose every three to four hours yeah this is especially important for somebody with diabetes mellitus type 1 so I'm gonna cross this one because it's a correct statement you want to find the incorrect statement and number four I need to call the healthcare healthcare provider because of this symptoms yes anytime you have some symptoms related to your diabetes nausea vomiting diarrhea you want to let know let the um, healthcare healthcare provider know so I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna cross this one out because it's a correct statement and the only one left 
is number one, which is I need to stop my insulin. Remember, need for further teaching means you want to find the incorrect statements by the client. So in this case, number one is the incorrect statement. Number one is the right answer. Hey guys, uh, so this is the last question. Number seven, uh, the nurse provides instruction to a client newly diagnosed with type one diabetes mellitus. The nurse should recognize or the nurse recognizes accurate understanding of measures to prevent diabetic ketoacidosis when the client makes which statement? So if you look at the question here, the nurse recognizes accurate understanding of measure to prevent diabetic ketoacidosis when the client makes which statement. So this is about uh, nursing education and you want to look for positive or correct statements by the clients. And this is all, this also needs a general uh, nursing knowledge, especially in diabetes mellitus. You want to know the pathophysiology, uh, treatment, signs and symptoms of diabetes mellitus. It will be so helpful to understand this question and to be able to answer this question. If you look at number one, I will stop taking my insulin if I'm too sick to eat. This is not a uh, correct answer because you don't want to take, you don't want to stop taking your insulin. Um, especially if you're type 1 diabetes mellitus, it doesn't matter if you're too sick to eat or if you don't eat, you don't want to stop taking your insulin. So this is a wrong uh, understanding by the client. So this is, I'm going to cross this out. Number two, I will decrease my insulin dose during times of illness. This is also a wrong understanding or wrong information uh, conveyed by the client because you don't want to decrease your insulin during time of illness. You want to increase your insulin during the time of illness. So I'm going to cross this out as well. Number three, I will adjust my insulin dose according to the level of glucose, glucose in my urine. Uh, as you guys know, adjustment of insulin depends on the blood glucose, not the urine glucose. So this is wrong. And number four, or I will notify my healthcare provider if my blood glucose level is higher than 250 milligram per deciliter. Uh, this is correct statement and this is the only option you have left. So you want to pick this one. Number four is the right answer. This is my video for today. My lecture on practice questions on diabetes mellitus. I hope this video is beneficial for you, especially when you're studying for NCLEX. And I'll see you in the next video. Happy camping.